fellow Southern Cameroonians, my dear brave warriors of our liberation struggle. Today is Thursday, the 23rd of January, in the year of our Lord, 2020. I come here with a very heavy heart. A heavy heart because the events of the past few days in Kumbo, in Bui County, do not honor anyone. The events that have unfolded have shown more than enough just how much the enemy is scoring victories in manipulating us. I have a heavy heart because nothing in the world can ever justify the killing of our own. When our people begin to turn their weapons against themselves, that is a clear indication that we are not praying enough. That is a clear indication that we are not helping ourselves enough by being able to foster internal communication that should avoid such occurrences. These acts, these kinds of happening are meant to be used by the enemy to try and discourage our people in a way as to break the determination that we have as we continue our march towards independence, towards total freedom. My dear people, I have listened to very shocking audio messages, some from the young, others from those in the middle ages, and then those from very old people. Where have we kept our sense of humanity? Audio messages that have come out in a flurry, calling of our young boys and girls to kill themselves without remorse. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, when a thing like what has happened in Kumbo confronts us, our first responsibility should be to pick up our phones, to pick up any form of communication at our disposal, to try to de-escalate the situation, not to fan more flames. I want to say here and very emphatically that I condemn with the last energy such evil acts like those that happened in Kumbo. Be it what happened in Guzang several months ago, or what happened in Moyoka at another point, or what happened, I mean, in every other part of the Southern Cameroons, or what has just happened in Kumbo, all such acts are absolutely condemnable. And I condemn all such with the last drop of my energy. These acts are showing more than enough just how divided we have remained. When things like this happen, I expect our people to come out there in audio communications to try and call for restraint, to try and call for an amicable settlement, to try and call for understanding, not finding more flames of deaths, not calling on our sons and daughters, brothers and sisters to kill themselves. Let me warn all of us, myself inclusive, each and every one of us, that it is because we have failed in our duty to enforce unity and collaboration, which is most needed to take us across the finish line much faster than it would be if we continue in the same state that these kind of things are happening. And trust me, the blood of all these innocent children is on our hands. If you are one of those who picked up your phone and sent out a hate audio out there calling for the slaughter of our people, may the blood of these children pursue you all your life. If you are one of those who even at this point is still continuing to send out hate and divisive messages, May the blood of even those who are still going to be killed because of these evil occurrences continue to pursue you. Let me make this clear. In this generation, where we have all forms of communications gadgets, we should use them to our advantage and not to our disadvantage. We should use them to promote peace and not to promote hate. 
We should use them to promote cohesion among ourselves and not to bring division and not to bring death and not to bring sufferings. My dear people, I am led to remind each and every one of us that because you sat quiet at the time you ought to come on and speak out against these kind of evil things that are happening in our midst, you also share the responsibility. Oh yes, the Bible says we sin by omission. I remember the Catholic prayer, the Catholic Church prayer that said, for I have sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Even the laws of man punish failure to assist and they call that negligence. Where is our sense of humanity? Where is our sense of brotherhood? I'd like to use this opportunity again to urge each and every single Southern Cameroonian, wherever you are, to recognize that it is because in the diaspora, we have decided to lie on our laurels, that we have now resorted to not only contributing heartily, seriously, towards cooperation, towards collaboration, towards general cohesion among all our actors on Ground Zero, we have thrown out our own duty, that of going out there in huge numbers to cry before diplomatic missions, to cry before the offices of international organizations, to cry before presidencies around the world, to draw the attention of the world to what is happening to our people. Just take a look at what happened in Bali the other day. Soldiers in huge numbers walk into the Bali daily market, looted every other shop. After they finished looting, carrying out what they thought would be useful for them, they set every other shop ablaze. When they were setting all of those shops in that daily market ablaze, they didn't discriminate as to which shop belonged to a CPDM militant, which one belonged to an SDF militant, which one belonged to a supporter of our cause for total liberation, and which one belonged to, the, to those who still continue to support the evil regime of Yaoundé. This is a clear indication that we are all in this together. This is a clear indication that in the eyes of La Republic du Cameroon, we, all of us, without any distinction, are not human beings. All of us, without any distinction, are slaves and have to continue to live in bondage, in slavery and servitude. The fate that awaits all of us if this liberation struggle were to fail is something I don't want any one of us to contemplate. My dear people, which is the last time that in the diaspora we constituted ourselves in huge numbers and went out there to cry so that our people on ground zero should also feel that comfort that we are all still in this train together. We have taken all our attention and turned it to spewing hate, turned it to spewing division, turned it to escalating internal divisions. Let me make this very clear again, that anyone that came out there with an audio message calling on our sons and daughters to kill themselves, examine your conscience. If you are not consciously an agent of the enemy planted in our midst to make sure you continue to, you know, create division, to promote hatred among us so as to facilitate the task of the enemy, then you are an unconscious facilitator of the genocide being visited on our people. This is the time more than ever before that we must continue relentlessly to call on our people to learn to collaborate. Mr. Paul Beer and his cohorts have been told in triumphant details that they cannot secure victory in a guerrilla warfare because even the strongest army in the world, that of the United States, can attest to the fact that it is an impossibility. But Mr. Paul Bia wants to leave the feet. He wants to teach the world that he can make history. And the only way he can do that is by using us. 
The only way he can do that is by using people planted in our midst to tear us apart so that we facilitate his job. And my people, I fear that is exactly what we are doing. But let me say this and reiterate. Those of us who have remained glued to the non-violent approach, those of us who have remained glued in civil activism would tell you that there is always room for reconciliation. There is always room for understanding. There is always room to mend our fences, to mend our differences, and to continue our struggle relentlessly and to ensure that that day, which is not too far, which has been ordained by God, we shall all cry, free, free, we are free at last. All hope is not lost. There is still a silver lining in this entire dark cloud and I'd like us to exploit it. This is the time more than ever before that we have to continue to concentrate our efforts on supporting our community volunteers who are going right and left, back and forth in the various communities to continue to sensitize the people despite the massive killings to stay away from the polls on the 9th of February. That will be our landmark victory. That is something that should call all of us to unity. I said in my previous outings that let us at least sign a truce at this moment, a truce of total collaboration and cooperation. I have personally picked my phone and called and spoken to about all those in the front lines. I spoke to Comrade Chris Anu. I spoke to Comrade Ayaba. I spoke to Comrade Yerima. I have spoken, I mean, to a lot of these people in the front lines. Sometimes with what people see as fishers, they will say it's not possible. But I have lifted that feet to ensure that we build cohesion at this point in time. We need it more than we need everything else. Please, my dear people, let us heal our wounds the fastest possible. And let us refocus on the enemy and do exactly what we have to do. The world is waiting to announce us on the 9th of February. The world is waiting to see our determination on the 9th of February. The world is waiting to mark another landmark in our determined march towards freedom on the 9th of February. Shall we make or shall we mark? The answer to this question is in our hands. So God be the glory.